Hello again YouTube, this is Charlie with House Call Auto Repair and today we've got a 2004 Chevy 2500 that has a parasitic draw on the battery and a couple of lights out and not really sure what else might be wrong with this for the vehicle. The owner wants me to go through it, see what it needs to have done for inspection. So we're going to get started on it today and see what we're up against. Yeah, it's been sitting for a couple of days now and uh, parasitic draw doesn't really seem to be the case. And after a couple of days of sitting and this thing, the battery would be dead and it's not. So let's see uh, what we got going on here. It's a little dusty, dirty. Once your wipers are on. Right. Oh, that <laughs> did not sound good. Okay, we had a nasty little misfire when it started. How do we turn this off? There we go. Odometer 2,000, 207,815 miles. Okay, I'm confused. I don't see any issues. I don't see any issues at all. You can hear an exhaust leak, manifold leak. Okay, what's with the buzzing noise when I push the brake pedal? Hmm. Hydraulic brakes? Can't be. Door ajar. Reverse. Neutral. Drive. Back brakes sound horrible. Playing the drive shaft. Okay, nothing unusual going through the gears. Well, I don't see anything, so we'll hook up the code scanner, see if there's anything pending or stored in this thing. You know, that little comment that I made about hydraulic brakes, there it is. Those are, uh, those are hydraulic brakes. And leaning on the vehicle, I can feel a little bit of a skip and a misfire. Got a little bit of a, a little bit of a nibble going on here. Get in here and try to figure out what's going on. Oh boy, rusty, rusty. I don't hear anything going on over on this side. It's clean. A little bit, a little bit up. Throwing oil on it, but nothing all too major. We got a broken exhaust manifold bolt right there. Oh, that's just a cover bolt, never mind. But we do have a broken bolt missing right there. And we got one missing back there. all over the hoses. Oh, that ain't good. Whoa. 
Probably help if that was hooked up. Mass airflow sensor. So right off the bat, right off the bat, we got a vacuum leak and don't have a check engine light for it. Oh my god. Got one bolt there. I'm assuming there's supposed to be something there that isn't. That's not anchored in or down. Oh yay. Okay, well, let's get to work. Another one of my little pet peeves is this crap in here. People got to realize that this stuff gets down inside your fender and it will rot out your car. Oh, what the heck is this? Spider nest. All right. But yeah, I got to get all of this stuff out of there because it gets down in here and does this. Start off with scanner. Two thousand four Chevy Silverado, six liter engine. Yes. Uh, let's see. Let's check the engine for now. Automatic transmission. Codes menu. Generic functions. Functional tests. Data display. Let's just go to data display. Engine data. Okay, cool. It's already warmed up. Mass airflow is reading good, even though we've got it not hooked up properly. Auto position four percent. That seems kind of low. Dual trims. Wow, fuel trims are nice. In spite of the leaks. Oxygen sensors. Bank one sensor two, bank two sensor two, bank bank one sensor two doesn't seem to be very alive at the moment. It's working. Voltage is low, but it's working. Maybe we got an issue going on with bank two. Bank two is dropping down. We'll look into that in a few minutes. Close loop. All right. Codes menu. Display codes. History codes. No codes present. All powertrain codes. P135 02 heater circuit bank one sensor one. And check engine light is currently not on. Test failed. That's about it. Oxygen sensor. Probably won't be any freeze frame data. Engine speed 1185. Desired idle, wow, that's high. 
Must have been while it was warming up. Fahrenheit 50 degrees, yeah. Arrow 292 map. Okay, okay, mass, air, mass air flow sensor. Holy cow, that's high. see any issues or I'm not seeing any issues here at the moment okay at the moment we've got uh, bank one up the top sensor two sensor one bank two at the bottom sensor two sensor one A couple of sensors acting a little bit strange here. Cycling. Second sensors are reacting really quick to this. This front sensors are acting a little strange compared to each other. Coming back to this, with our amperage draw on the sensors, 0 0.6, 0 0.58, uh, zero right there. Bank one sensor, one heater is drawing zero amps. We got a dead heater amp circuit. Uh, bank two sensor, one point seven eight. Air fuel ratio fourteen point six to one, pretty close. Fuel trims zero one minus one zero four. Long term's a little. That's still acceptable though, no matter how you look at it. Coolant 190. Let's see if we can find some uh, misfire data. Three five seven zero two four six eight zero. The history zero, history zero. So this thing is not detecting a misfire, not exactly running super smooth, but. temperature 77 it's currently uh, about 50 degrees outside this fire counter normal uh, well, we are not picking up any misfires at all I 
Uh, he said that the uh, the battery in this thing was occasionally going dead. Right now, we're not having any issues with the battery. The only thing I'm seeing is an issue with that one oxygen sensor. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. Get this out of the way. Still got no check engine light. All the gauges are working. Oil pressure is responsive. Charge is good. Temperature is good. Okay. I'm guessing that's transmission temperature. Okay, well, oxygen sensor, headlight switch. Everything's on. Let's do a quick walk around. Tail light. Tail light. Now yeah, that's going to be an inspection fail. License plate light. That one's lit. Side markers. I see. Probably should be a light in there. No side marker lights. Headlights. No light here. That marker light's working. That marker light's working. Try the high beams. beams are working. Let's try the four ways. I work inside. That one works. That one works. kind of interesting. That one works. And that one works. But the low doesn't work on that one. Okay, we're going to get back here. He said he doesn't know if the emergency brake is working. to the floor that's not cool okay a little parking brake it's not sufficient for passing inspection indicator does work one reverse light oh he's got the LEDs in this one Those aren't gonna work for crap. All right. Okay, well, well, now we start the grocery list. So I'm trying to chase down why the uh, fog lights aren't working. The marker lights are all set. There's nothing going on at the fog lights. I haven't found the fuse or breaker yet, but what in the world is this? That's for the horn. Why is there a wire instead of a fuse? Another thing to pay particularly close attention to is when one of these is labeled in 86, 87, 30, 85, they correspond to the pins on the bottom of the relay. And in this case, this relay right here was in backwards. That'll cause a drop. That's for the ignition. 
Well, not knowing much about these trucks, I found out what that light is all about. That light right up there. And that light works. What I couldn't figure out was the daytime running lights, which are these right here. And those do work, but the vehicle has to be in gear in order for them to turn on. And to replace the license plate lights, underneath there's a little clip you gotta push. It's a little hard to get at. It allows you to snap the front on, out. Pop out the light bulb. Insert the new one. Make sure it works. And put the cover back together. Everything up there is all covered in brake fluid now. So somewhere up in there is where that blown out brake line is. We're going to have to find that and fix it. And I suspect the easiest way to deal with this is going to be to take the bed right off the truck.